So you know how you always want to get that global illumination sort of feeling when rendering in Eevee, but of course you can because you definitely have to get that in cycles. That is about to change. Now we've seen Eevee Next coming, but prior to Eevee Next arrival, there are certain things that you can work with. Today we're looking at the beautiful group node, something that just simply makes sense. A huge shout out to Pedro for making this one available that can make you get some sort of nice looking global illumination with Eevee instead of spending too much time doing that in cycles. Now we'll talk about the things that you need to know about and finally how you can actually get this going. So first things first, what is global illumination? Global illumination is basically a set of algorithms that takes into account the direct and indirect light source and bounces that happens within your scene. So these light bounces is what helps light your scene or light the objects within your scene. So say for example, a wall hanging out somewhere because of the light source and also how the texture or how the wall actually accepts or receives light, this can help light any of the object around it. So once light rays gets casted, this light gets calculated and they bounce across different surfaces. And in its totality, the idea here is for both the direct and indirect light to help illuminate the entire scene some way, somehow. But this is something that you can really get with Eevee. You can currently achieve this in cycles when using the vanilla version of Blender. And that is where this group node actually comes in. Furthermore, the group node also offers caustic, which is something that is pretty interesting to see that we can even get along with every other thing that I just mentioned totally for free. I mean, this is super cool. So how can you get this going? So some time ago, we did talk about a certain set of add-ons that you can use to create this. But right now you actually don't need an add-on to make that possible. You just need a certain group of nodes. And to get things started, what you need to do is go over to the link in the description that will bring you over to Pedro's itch.io page or blend swap. So Pedro has created the screen space ray tracing for Blender, which is super, super nice. So the beautiful thing about this is you can pick it up and you can do whatever you want. It is totally free and he's continually updating it. So if you scroll all the way down, you'd notice that an update was just done a couple of days back and it is for something that we just talked about, which is the caustic update. So if you like to grab this, you can simply go over to the link in the description and grab it. At the same time, you can also choose to tweak this to your heart content. I mean, if you like to break it and also get some things working for you. So what the shader does is it adds global illumination filter over the principal BSDF using the glossy BSDF node, and then it adds an ambient occlusion mask on it. How do you work with this? So if you do download the file, what you'll be getting is a zip file. The zip file contains the caustic demo, the first demo, the second demo, and also the third one. And by all means, you can explore all those demos and see all of the amazing things that you can do with it. But then it all boils down to the question of how do you get this to work for your own particular scene? So to explore that, what you need to do is get a fresh copy of Blender, and then you need to go over to File, go all the way to Append, locate the directory where you downloaded and also extracted the file. And you can select from any of these four folders to get things started. So in this case, I'm just gonna go over with demo one. We have the SSRT. I'm just also going to double click on that and go over to where you have the node tree, double click on that as well. And you need to click on the principal BSDF SSRT and click on the word append. And once you do that, that is basically all you need. So at this point, if we throw in a simple plane, so I'm just gonna get this plane right there. And I'm also going to grab this. Actually, instead of using something this simple, let's drag in the asset browser. So I'm going to switch over to the asset browser. So we do have some stuff from Cortis community pack, which of course he has been updating every time. A huge shout out to Cortis. So the reason why we're using this is because it's a bit complex and it looks pretty nice. And it's also a little bit away from our regular Suzanne. So next thing which we need to do is switch over to our shader. So by default, if I have this object selected and I click on the word new, we have a BSDF. If I do the same thing here, select this, click on the word new, we have the BSDF. If we switch over to rendering, this is what we get. Looking nice. But then let's also do something a little bit different. What we will do is turn this off. Actually, let's turn this one off. So if we turn this off, you notice we don't get anything happening here. Now I'm also gonna leave these two together, go all the way to where we have Eevee, turn on the screen space reflection, and you also notice that we don't have anything going. This is how this tool works. It's pretty interesting. You need to hit the shift and tap A on the keyboard, go over to group, and then you would locate the principal BSDF SSRT. Once you load this up, you can now notice that you have the default BSDF right here, and you have the BSDF with the SSRT. This is the one you want to connect over to your surface because all of the properties that you have here 
you have them right here and even more. And you notice that the minute we connect this right over to this part, that this lights up. If we go ahead and do the same thing for this other one, and let's grab that, click right here, drop this right in here, and also relocate this right over to this point, you would now notice that we start getting something looking pretty nice. Now, if we choose, for example, to switch over to cycles and take a look, you'd notice it looks pretty similar, very similar to what you have with EV. But then the beautiful part here is you have control of how the SSRT actually multiplies. So if we go in here and we drag this all the way to this point, we can go ahead and multiply this and even get way more stuff going for us. At the same time, if you like to start introducing your light, you can. So we can throw in that light and you can see what we have. And it's not going to be too far from what you're going to get when you're looking at cycles. So with cycles right now, you can see that the only difference is we're reading directly from the multiplier and loading that into cycles and it's a little bit too much. So to actually down this a little bit, what you can do is drag this all the way and then we can get an output. So most of you guys probably don't know, but you can actually work with multiple material outputs for different engines at different times. So we can load that in there and set this over to cycles. And what will happen is it's not going to use the multiplication we have from here. Rather, it is going to use just the default principal BSDF and work with that right for cycles when we're rendering with cycles. So we can switch over to EV and you can also notice what we have. So this is definitely going to be game changing for lots of people, especially when you want to deal with large scene and you also want to get that global illumination happening at various times. It's also worth mentioning that once you have a surface like this selected, we can go ahead and add colors. And even if we choose to turn this off, you would notice that we're getting that global illumination thing going. And this may not necessarily give you a complete idea of what you would be needing if you don't have light. And that is where having light actually come in handy. So if you're looking at, you know, getting that screen space global illumination with EV, then you might want to consider looking at this. And like we mentioned earlier, there are sets of demos that you can work with and you can simply proceed to explore these things to your heart content. Something else which also makes sense is at any point in time you want to explore this and you want to see some more stuff, how this was built, you can simply select the principal BSDF, press the tab key, and you can take it for a spin and see all of the nodes that are responsible for working with this. So for those who are thinking about trying this out, you can go over to the link in the description where you can see the screen space ray tracing for Blender and you can start exploring it. If you're also thinking about comparing this alongside with cycles, there's a couple of things I think you need to know. First off is in certain situations, this will give you close to similar results. But if you're doing things like interiors, you need to have enough light. So this is one of the test scenes that we're looking at earlier and you can see what this looks like. So the SSRT node makes it work. But if we simply use the normal BSDF and we connect it over to the surface, this is what your default EV would give you. And this is what the SSRT is giving you. And I believe this looks better. But in comparison with cycles, you get something like this. So one thing to keep in mind is for cycles, you'll definitely be getting a better GI. But if you're looking for something that you can get like faster screen space, you know, ray tracing, really quick stuff, then you might want to consider looking at this and seeing all of the possibilities that it has to offer. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Link to all of this is going to be in the description. So do well to check it out. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.